Comedy Central presents Hari Kondabolu. is right. You are correct. That, that, is, that is accurate. Yes, audience, that is correct. You have predicted the future. Correct. <laughs> correct. Man, it's so nice to be home, New York. This is good, man. I've been traveling all over the country. I just got back from Portland, Oregon. Yeah, yeah. P Portland, of course, is a very progressive city, one that does not spay or neuter its hippie population. So it's... <laughs> Uh, there, there is an overabundance. Uh, yeah. Portland is a city where you can find the answer to the question, how many didgeridoos do you need to hear until you want to blow your brains out? Does anybody, does anybody know the answer to that one? It's one. That's right. It's one. It's one, one didgeridoo. So I've had some weird experiences in Portland. Last time I was there, I was hanging out with a friend. He introduced me to his friend. Introductions are always weird for me because my name is Hurry, and that's constantly mispronounced. Hurry, Harry, right? Different ways to screw it up, and it leads to these awkward conversations. So this guy asked me what my name was, and I told him my name is Hurry. Hurry? No, it's Hurry. Hurry? I'm like, look, I don't want to play this game right now, okay? Just uh, <laughs> make eye contact, say something close. I'll know you're talking to me. And, and he got really upset about this. Like, no, I want to get your name right, okay? It's important that I get your name right. Because people get my name wrong all the time, and I'm sick of it. I'm like, all right, man, what's your name? My name is Dave. <laughs> Wait, did you just say your name was Dave? No, not Dave. My name is Dave. <laughs> and so I hugged him. <laughs> Yeah, I, I did. Here, here was a man who could relate to my secret pain. And after our embrace, I asked him, friend, why did your parents name you Dave? <laughs> and he said, well, they didn't. They named me Dave, but last year I legally changed it to Dave. It's, uh... <laughs> It's, a, it's spelled D-E-Y-F. No. That is not my problem. That is a much different problem. That is a much larger problem. That is clearly a Portland, Oregon-based problem. Don't pretend! So, as I was exiting my apartment this evening, I saw parked out in front a hybrid Escalade. <laughs> a hybrid Escalade. Come to terms with that reality. What kind of people are buying a hybrid Escalade? Well, you see, I'm an environmentalist, and my husband's a f douchebag. <laughs> And this is how we compromise <laughs> to keep our sham marriage alive. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, man. I, I don't know how much people are willing to concede to save the planet. Like, recently there was a story about Sun Chips, right? Sun Chips had biodegradable bags. Amazing, right? Like, uh, corporate responsibility, it shows that they're, they want to save the planet, fantastic. But then people started complaining that the bags were too noisy. <laughs> so then they got rid of the biodegradable bags. Do you know what else makes a lot of noise? The end of the world! <laughs> the hell is wrong with everybody? I don't know. I was on a plane recently. I was reading the, the, the in-flight magazine. The in-flight magazine for that particular trip was an environmental issue. 
Yeah, I was reading about the environment while sitting on a pollution machine that can fly. <laughs> so I'm clearly cynical, but I'm bored, so I'm reading the, uh, the first article. The first article is called Top 10 Endangered Places. Here's the first sentence. Climate change and tourism are threatening to destroy these natural wonders. Okay, I'm kind of surprised here. Clearly, tourism is in the best interest of the airline industry. Yeah, way to go, man. It's a responsibility, airline. But then I read the rest of the sentence. Climate change and tourism are threatening to destroy these natural wonders, so you might want to plan a trip now <laughs> before these sites are gone for good. We're screwed. <laughs> we're screwed because some corporations are treating the planet like we're in second semester senior year. <laughs> it's almost over. <laughs> it. So let me talk about something perhaps we can all relate to. Chocolate, yeah, yeah, we all know or like chocolate, yes? Chocolate. Chocolate is great. I love chocolate. Here's why I love chocolate so much. You see, in this country, a person is assumed to be white unless otherwise specified. That's why I like chocolate. Because when you first think of chocolate, you think of something brown. And if you think of white chocolate first, well, then you're a racist. Honestly. Come on. Who's thinking of chocolate in that situation exactly? And here's the bigger question. Why did we need white chocolate to begin with? All right, what was wrong with chocolate? It's chocolate, it's great. Why did we need to make white chocolate? Do you love the taste of chocolate, but can't stand looking at it? <laughs> well, try some white chocolate, huh? It's from the people that brought you white Jesus. <laughs> so I was living in London uh, a couple of years ago, and uh, one night I was hanging out in East London on a street called Liverpool Street, and I was looking for Brick Lane, which is right near Liverpool Street, but I couldn't find it. I was frustrated. I kept going around in circles, right? And I see this woman, I ask her if she knew where Brick Lane was, and she didn't, not a big deal. I start walking away when this woman grabbed me, she looked me in the eye and said, excuse me, but I go to church, and I believe in Jesus Christ, and I think you should believe in Jesus as well. Damn. <laughs> How did you get from this part of the conversation to that part of the conversation so quickly? It's like she thought to herself, ah, he does not know where Brick Lane is, clearly. He is lost in all aspects of his life. <laughs> I will help him. Jesus, uh, perhaps you've heard the name before. <laughs> yeah, perhaps, yes. That PR campaign has been quite successful, right? <laughs> that name has been spread mostly through word of mouth and pamphlets and bullets were used at some point. Yes, I'm familiar <laughs> with this Jesus fellow. He looks like Bjorn Borg for no reason. Yeah, I'm familiar. Now, I wanted to end the conversation, but I wanted to be polite about it. I said, uh, excuse me, miss, uh, thank you very much, but, but I'm a Hindu. <laughs> I'm taken, right? I, uh, I, uh, I have a box to check. <laughs> and it didn't matter, it didn't matter. And I know it didn't matter because she said, it doesn't matter. <laughs> It doesn't matter what you are or who you are, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves me, Jesus gives me strength, Jesus gives me direction. Oh, okay, but then can you ask Jesus where Brick Lane is? I can't find it. And this confused her, because it wasn't in the script she was reading in her head, so she walked away. And I was frustrated, and not because she's Christian. She has the right to her faith. That's never my issue. My frustration with, was with her piss-poor salesmanship, you know? The, <laughs> it's just bad salesmanship. She had one option. Uh, Jesus? No? Well, uh, then how about Jesus? Uh, <laughs> have you tried Christ? No, that's the same guy. Don't, uh, don't rebrand him. I know who... 
Jesus Christ is. You know? I mean, uh, Hindus aren't supposed to convert, but if we were, at least we'd have some options, you know? At least we'd know how to sell God, you know? Hey, man, let me ask you a question. You like elephants? I got elephant guy right here. Elephant guy, Ganesha, got elephant guy. He can get you through hard times, man. I'll get you through hard. No, not for you. That's cool. Elephants are scary for some people. I get it. You like monkeys? I got monkey guy. I got monkey guy. Monkey Hanuman. Has a tail. He can fly. No? All right, maybe. All right, you like the color blue? Oh, good. All right. All right oh, three for one. Vishnu, Rama, Krishna. That's three for one. Three for what? No? All right. Okay, that's fine. Uh, you like warranties? You like lifetime warranties. Reincarnation, that's infinite lifetimes warranty. No? How about some weed? Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Weed wins again. So, uh... I was hanging out with my younger brother recently, and we got into a conversation about how great an older brother I am. I brought up the topic. Um, and he was being sarcastic, because he had remembered a game that I had invented when I was six and he was four, called the belt game. Um, you see, uh, I found my dad's belt and invented a game where the rules were, you had to hit each other with the belt. And, uh, that's as far as I'd gotten at that point. <laughs> now, I'm the older brother, right? So I got to go first. <laughs> so I took the belt and I whipped him in the eye. <laughs> and he started screaming and crying like a four-year-old. And, and then my mom walked in and to my surprise, she also knew how to play the belt game. <laughs> I was like, Mom, how do you know how to play the belt game? I just made it up. I mean, apparently she was an old pro. A, uh, because she would take the belt and she would hit me across the back with it. And she said, now, now you know how your brother feels. And I looked back at her and I said, no, I don't. I hit him in the eye. <laughs> that was the end of belt game and a much-needed return to Nerf. <laughs> there's, a, there's so much hatred between people of different faiths in the world that doesn't really make sense to me, especially the hatred between the Jews, the Christians, and the Muslims. Those are Abrahamic religions. They have a lot in common. The Jews have the Torah. The Torah is the Old Testament and the Bible. The stuff that's in the Torah and the Bible, that makes up a lot of the Quran. One could argue that the latter two religions are really sequels to the first religion. That's weird, to hate somebody simply because they like a sequel. Yeah. That's like if I liked the movie Back to the Future and hated somebody who liked the movie Back to the Future 2. Yeah. You like Back to the Future 2? What are you, crazy? Where does it say anything about hoverboards in Back to the Future? When Doc Brown goes to his prophet, Marty McFly, does he mention hoverboards and sports almanacs? Seriously. I mean, whatever, man. Back to the Future 1 was... <gasps> Don't you call it Back to the Future 1? <laughs> there is only one Back to the Future. That's like my favorite movie, man. I love Back to the Future. It's like the best. But I have some issues with it, like with all time travel films, because the main character is told not to change the past because the present will be forever altered. As if the present was so great to begin with. <laughs> That's the whole time Doc Brown's like, no, Marty, you can't change anything. The space time continues. Your parents will never meet. There'll be gigawatts all over the place. The flux capacitator will blow. No, Marty, you can't change anything. But, but, Doc, I mean, if we can prevent slavery, I mean, shouldn't we prevent... The... No, Marty, you can't prevent slavery. Absolutely not, because if you prevent slavery, then rock and roll won't exist. No, Marty, you can't... No, Marty, you can't prevent the genocide of the Native Americans. Absolutely not, because then white kids can't play lacrosse. No, Marty, you can't... Absolutely no. No. Great Scott, I'm a racist, Marty. I'm a racist. 
and I think I want to be a cowboy. Yeah, so. There's still a, a lot of racism in this country, like what you're seeing in Arizona right now. It's remarkable. This anti-immigration legislation that they're trying to push, right, where they would allow police officers to racially profile undocumented immigrants, especially people in the Mexican community. I think that's horrendous. But what amazes me is that people support this law. I was watching the news. This woman in Arizona looking at a camera, straight face. She says, hey, we're just trying to bring the country back to the way it used to be. The way it used to be. Lady, you're in Arizona. It used to be Mexico. I mean, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> I, have, uh, I have a lot of political activist friends. Uh, they listen to a lot of 60s protest music, which isn't really music I listen to. And I was at this party recently, and that's all that was playing. So I, I turned to my friend, I'm like, hey, man, can, can we take this music off? I find it obnoxious. And uh, <laughs> this, this upset him. And he's like, you don't like my music, man? But my music is the sound of the revolution. <laughs> what? You think acoustic guitar is the sound of the revolution. Maybe I'm being a bit naive. I always assumed the revolution would be a bit louder, you know? I, I assumed gunfire and uh, bombs blowing up and uh, the blood-curdling screams of rich people having their throats slit and their <laughs> land taken away and perhaps even their organs eaten. Uh, or at the bare minimum, uh, electric guitar. I mean, seriously, now you... You can't kill other people to acoustic guitar. Uh, you can only kill yourself. <laughs> so I was telling this joke recently at a small liberal arts college, and uh, <laughs> this young woman came up to me. She was very upset. She's like, you know, there's a lot of really good rich people in the world. I don't think it's fair that you just grouped everybody. And I, I get what she was saying. She was saying me, my family, my siblings. Uh, <laughs> The people in my country club, the kids that went to my private boarding school. Like, I got what she was saying, and I thought I'd compromise with her. So I made a list of exactly who would die in the revolution um, <laughs> that I wanted to share with you tonight. Yeah. List of people who will die in the revolution <laughs> by Hari Kondabolu. I really shouldn't put my name on it. Um, <laughs> All right, all right. List of people who will die in the revolution. Number one, anyone who has called their car ghetto because their built-in GPS didn't work <laughs> will die in the revolution. <laughs> Two, anyone whose first real job was being the star of a reality television show and the name of the show wasn't inner city youth unable to find work and forced to star in reality television show, <laughs> will die in the revolution. Three, Jimmy Buffett. Four. <laughs> that one's kind of obvious. Huh? Four, anyone who has used the phrase my grandparents' cottage in a sentence without it being preceded by the phrase, we had to sell, <laughs> will die in the revolution. Five, the young woman who inspired the creation of this list, her parents, her siblings, <laughs> the people at her country club, and the kids who went to her private boarding school, with the exception of the affirmative action and financial aid students, <laughs> will die in the revolution. And finally, the woman who boarded the JetBlue flight to Burbank in front of me, who turned to her husband and said, I hate flying JetBlue because JetBlue does not have first class. <laughs> it's JetBlue! <laughs> JetBlue's like the best airline in the world. I mean, everybody gets a comfortable seat, everybody gets ample legroom, everybody gets a television, everybody gets unlimited snacks. This woman's issue wasn't that there wasn't first class. 
Her issue was that there was finally equality in the world. <laughs> this woman will die in the revolution. Thank you, everybody. Good night. My name is Harry Kinderbell.